Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome to the Spinner Rack, issue 10. I am your host, Big B, Brian Adams. Alongside me, as always, my co-host. Mr. Toy Collector, Junior Ruiz. Toy Collector extraordinaire. Right? You got me beat there. I'm like a hobbyist. I see some shit I buy here and there. I'm not a bona fide toy collector as you are, sir. Which that is going to be our choice of topic for this evening. Toy collecting. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, there's different ways to collect. You collect what you want, obviously. That's the first and foremost rule. Collect what you like uh, and collect what you can afford. Don't try to collect the line like, oh, I want to get into toy collecting. I make, you know, I, I work at McDonald's. Let me go back and collect vintage Mego dolls. <laughs> <laughs> like, I make no, eight and a quarter an hour, about one hundred and fifty dollars a week. Yeah, I'm gonna collect vintage in a figures. month. I'll buy my first figure. Right? You know, yeah. no way. Don't do it. Collect what you like. Plain and simple. And most toy collectors start off by collecting the stuff that they grew up on. You know, because that has the most value to them, sentimental value, obviously. With me, uh, it was Ninja Turtles. You know, uh, I grew up on that. Yeah, I grew up on Transformers and GI Joe and stuff. But as far as the toys, uh, I didn't really get into GI Joe toys until I was like in fifth grade. To be honest with you, um, they just didn't catch my eye for some reason. I was a big GI Joe collector up till I was like thirteen, dude, like freshman year of high school. Yeah, I was still buying them, but I didn't save any of them. Mm-hmm. Didn't save any of them. Now, like you know, once I hit my twenties, I'd buy stuff I like. Like I got Mace Windu from Star Wars movies because I'm. Big Sam Jackson fan. Not my trip. Yeah, exactly. I always wanted. To, I always wanted to get an extra one so I could make it a Jules yeah. from Pulp Fiction. Nice. <laughs> Trick it out. I give him my lightsaber. It's the one that says "bad motherfucker." <laughs> nice, nice. But uh, yeah, unlike you, who is like the Uber toy collector, I buy stuff I like. You know, I see stuff here and there. I'm not so much as concerned about the complete collection as I am just getting the pieces I like, the pieces I can afford. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I just recently scored my, uh, what I like to call Zombie Justice League, mm-hmm. which was the DC Direct Blackest Night mm-hmm. Black Lantern figures, which I got a good deal on. What can I say? Yeah. Paid 13 bucks a figure, man. Yeah. Not bad. All Way below cost. Vintage. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, not vintage, but perfect. In package. There are mm-hmm. no scratches. They're mints. Oh, I even got a large fleece for 13 bucks. Nice. Which I could easily turn around and sell on eBay for a hundred. Wow. Probably won't though. And that's but, where the uh, love comes in. Yeah, you know? totally. So yeah, first rule of collecting, man: collect what you like and collect what you can afford. There's been so many toy lines uh, that I've collected over the years. Some I've parted ways with, but there's some I just stuck with. You know, uh, I grew up on the X Men figures, Toy Biz in the early '90s. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I know you got all those old X Men figures. Got a good chunk of that set that's not complete yet, but and all my figures are on card, min on card. Um, I have some open, but those are the ones from my childhood. You know, uh, if I if I deem that a figure is so badass, I have to open it. I will buy two. Yeah, I I, I feel that man. You know, um, I was never sure if I wanted to collect toys. I mean, obviously, I loved playing with them as a kid. Um, I even went as far as if I knew what I was getting for Christmas, I would sit, literally sit there and pump out a script for what I wanted with the toys, regardless what line it was. Um, but yeah, I grew up on the turtles. I had a f- few Transformers here and there, but they're so expensive that I. Like, to me, Turtles was my thing. You know, I remember getting my first Turtle action figure. I was walking to school. We had to go. Like, I lived a block away from the school, and we cut through an alley. And I was telling my mom. I didn't even know his name at the point. You know, that's how young I was. I was like, oh, I want the blue one with the swords. You know, I think he's a cool toy or whatever. And she's like, oh, I'll see what I can do, blah, blah, blah. No big deal. Uh, I remember waking up at 6 a.m. one morning to go watch Ninja Turtles. And I lay on the couch. It was so dark. All I turned on was the TV, and I'm still rubbing the sleep out of my eye. And I lay on the couch, and I hear crinkle, crinkle. I was like, what the hell? And I get up, and there's a Leonardo in the package sitting on the couch. <gasps> like, I almost pissed my pants, dude. You know? <laughs> Did you open him? Of course. I was like, five. <laughs> okay, right on. Right I on. opened him. Um... But he, he ended up breaking his leg, snapped off to that plastic piece. Oh, that sucks. But to this day, I still own that broken one. Yeah? Yeah, I still own it. That's badass, dude. I got it in a little Ziploc baggie and shit, put away. But yeah, you know, it was the turtles for me. And um, I, I loved every minute of it. Obviously, as I grew up and grew older, I got, I got to the X-Men stuff. When the Spider-Man Fox Kids series came out in 94, I got into those figures heavily. And that's around the time I started getting into G.I. Joe somewhat towards the end of their run. When it was more like the Space Brigade and right, Battle right. Corp and all that stuff. So I got into that. I enjoyed it. Um, I guess I heavily got into the X-Men. But then there, uh, I realized Toy Biz would start making wrestling figures. You know, they are making the WCW figures. Got into the Smash and Slams. I was like, yeah, I was nice. on it, you know. So is that what got you into the wrestling figures? Was um, the early Toy Biz line? Or? Well, no, because I had <laughs> some of the Jack-specific ones as well. Okay, right. And I always liked wrestling, but I didn't like the original figures. I was like, yeah, they're there. I remember the old... Uh, the old school ones the that old were just Hasbro like... The ones. Not the, the LJ ones. Not the big, like, 
uh, eight inch ones, right? On. The small Hasbro ones, yeah, totally. Where like I remember the Jake the Snake Roberts figure, where he had he was posed like throwing a fist, and he pulled his right arm back, and it was a spring. He would punch the figure, and you had like the Power Slam Ultimate Warrior and all that right shit. Right on. Those were cool. I still have the wrestling ring to that, but I don't nice. have any of the figures. I might, I might have an Ultimate Warrior. I'm not sure, but those were great figures, and that's a line I would actually like to go back and collect one day. But I don't want to start that line. And still have some lines that I'm almost done with, but not complete. Right. I might as well complete those first. But yeah, and it was the wrestling figures after that in, in the in mid to late, or almost in the late 90s. You know, I ended high school in 97, so it was around that time. Um, yeah, and I was just on the wrestling figures, man. And then that's pretty much all it was. And then Beast Wars was out, so I was kind of into Beast Wars, but kind of not. And when, by the time I moved out of Chicago when I was 17, Beast Machines action figures had just come out. And I was getting into those. So I moved out to Elgin or whatever. And I, it took me a while to get adjusted before I could start collecting again. So I took a brief pause. But then I was just like, eBay. eBay was still kind of new right. in the early, like late 99, early 2000. So I got on there and I educated myself on how to use eBay. And the first thing that popped in my mind, go buy, go back and buy your Ninja Turtles. Nice. <laughs> and I've been on them ever since. And then over the year, like I said, the Simpsons Playmate stuff came out. You know, and then your, your, your tastes change. You know, you tend Absolutely. to start collecting for other reasons, details, um, value, just tons of stuff. So, I mean, I've got a little bit of everything that I like. You know, DC Direct, I don't think I have one complete line. You know, my main... Yeah, I don't... I don't I, like I said, I mean, I did a lot of toy collecting as a young kid, but it was all opening stuff, stuff you played with, a lot of G.I. Joes, had a lot of Star Wars when I was a kid because I was that age. I wish I'd have had that stuff as an adult now. I probably saw mixed money with it. It all been open. But when I hit the 20s, man, it became like, well, you're in the comic book store, and now... The action figures are catering to a different market than a kid that wants to rip it out and play with the toy. Right. Like, I got Cheech and Chong action figures. Nice. You know? I got a Cheech and Chong flask. I never opened yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, I have Cheech and Chong, dude. Never opened them. I have uh, my mom for my, I think it was uh, Christmas, probably like 13, 14 years ago, got me a, an Ash versus Evil Ash action figure set where it's got both of, you know, Ash and Evil Ash and then a bunch of little ashes. Never opened it. Still got that shipment in the package. But your, your taste changed. You buy different things. I remember I, uh, when the Star Wars movies, the prequels came out, I tried to, outside of grabbing Mace Windu and like Darth Vader and shit like that, I tried to grab like the bullshit characters mm-hmm. that I thought would make money. And I only did it with episode one because then I realized that those figures today aren't worth shit. Right. Um, I, I, I couldn't even give them to, like, you know, my nephew or anything, or, or one of my friend's younger kids, because they're lame-ass, and, lame-ass characters and don't even want to play with them. Stupid pod racers and shit that are pretty much worthless. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me now, man, it's like, like you said, dude, it becomes about the detail. Articulation's a big thing. I really like the new Marvel figure lines. Uh, it seems like, though, once I decided I wanted to buy them, they didn't have them anymore. <laughs> Wait, which ones are you talking about? The, the Marvel... Uh, the three and three quarter size? Ones. Yeah, the, the Marvel, Marvel Universe. Universe. Oh, they're still out. I don't, I can't find them anywhere. They're still out. Anytime I go anywhere, all I find are like Avengers and Thor and Amazing Spider-Man. Walmart hardly ever carries them. You've got to yeah. go to Toys R Us and you've got to go to Target. Yeah. Yeah. Or online. Yeah, see, I go to Toys R Us a lot for most of my my stuff, and uh, I don't ever, like I said, I always see, like, they'll randomly have, like, a couple guys, right. but it's never anybody I want. Yeah, because they're released in Wave. And then, Dude, you uh, might as well start buying them by a case. By the cases. You might as well order them. BBTS.com. And then some of them just look like just shit, dude. Like the new Superman toys. I saw those at Walmart oh, last night movie. for the new movie for Man yeah. of Steel. They look terrible, dude. Yeah. And the thing that sucks is they're only six bucks a piece. And it's like... Well, did you see the Dark Knight toys? The little... Yeah. Those were horrible. Yeah, those were horrible. So what, what, growing up, what was your favorite line, man? Like if you had to pick one toy line that was just a shit to you. It would have had to have been Transformers, dude. But the thing is, I didn't get a lot of them. They're because, so like, they were expensive. They were. But they were, like, coveted when I did get them. Like, I remember when I got Grimlock. Like, I that you. <laughs> was, like, my favorite fucking toy, dude. See, out of all the Transformers I had when G1 when I was a kid, the most popular Transformer I had, or the most known, was Ultra Magnus. Yeah. And I still have it. Uh, although it's not in mint condition, I lost a few pieces. Nothing right big. on. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if you ever had the original Ultra Magnus figure. You know, Wasn't he pretty much, like, Optimus he, Prime with a bunch of add-ons? Yeah. Like a white Optimus yeah. Prime? With so a bunch what of I did... When I figured out that it was just Optimus Prime, is I painted the damn thing nice. with a marker. <laughs> I painted them with That's a marker. That's awesome. And I still have it. I have all the pieces. The only pieces I'm missing is the the chest plate. That was it. Yeah, but. see, those were like coveted figures when I was a kid, dude. Optimus Prime, Mega, the Megatron gun. You couldn't get those, dude. I I, like, I don't know what it was. I don't know if my parents couldn't afford them mm-hmm. or they just couldn't find them, which is something I've run into now as I'm now an adult and a toy collector is, man, people grab shit up quick. Mm-hmm. And you almost need to have like an in at stores that for someone to like be like, hey, or like you said, case. order by cases. But, uh, man, shit just goes quick. Like the new Turtles line. 
the Leatherhead and Snakeweed and Baxter Stockman. Mm-hmm. I saw those dudes once the Absolutely. day I got nice. April and Crank, and I thought about, and I didn't even see Snakeweed. Mm-hmm. I saw Leather Leatherhead and Baxter Stockman, and I thought about buying them, but I was buying my girl wrestling figures too, and I didn't want to drop like a hundred dollars in Toys R Us, <laughs> you know. So I just grabbed the April and Crank that I needed from the previous series. Have not seen them again, dude. Nice. And like I said, every time I like go to Walmart, it's really Walmart. That I, I need to stop looking for this shit at Walmart because they seem to be fucking barren when it comes to Ninja Turtles. It all depends gone. on the Walmart. Well, it must be the Walmarts in Wheeling Mount Prospect area. Why the hell are you even out there? That's because of where I live currently. Dude, when we finish this podcast, we're going to Walmart. We're hitting up Target. <laughs> I'm going to buy some toys now, Danny. <laughs> Been doing it, man. Going to buy some toys. Been doing Figure it. Figure I want that fucking Enterprise up there. That thing is. Dude, that, shit. you know what? I'm not a huge Star Trek fan, <clears throat> but that is badass. That thing is pimp. Uh, for those of you wondering, here at the store, we've got a uh, a Star Trek Next Generation Starship Legends uh, ship. It's the USS Enterprise N Double C Dash One Seven O One O. Is that an O or a D? D. It's a D. I'm pretty sure it's I read that serial number wrong. I'm pretty sure it's just all like the Next Generation ship. You dumbass. Like I said, I'm not a Star Trek. You can just call it Enterprise D. There you go. The, 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 str- the, the truck, Enterprise the D. truck nerds. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but, uh, no, that is a, a badass ship. It's got uh, the detail on it is just amazing. It is. It looks. It it's looks. It's got pimp. a try me button. It's it's it's. I think it's reasonably priced. What really, is the like, price? It's Sixty bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Sixty, seventy bucks, something like that. No more. Than, it's no more than seventy. I almost want to say it's sixty. That's got great detail, man. It looks. My excellent. only my only problem with it is the crease, but I'm very I'm a stickler. For oh condition. yeah, yeah. I see that now. I'm a stickler for condition. Yeah. I hear that. I've gotten like that now. That's why it took me so long to find a lot of the Ninja Turtles I have now is because you want them perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes the the plastic isn't glued on center. It's you know, I off. actually called you from Walmart a couple weeks ago. Um, I went in there, and I found an April. Yeah. Now, in the bubble... You know, it has their name on the front. Uh-huh. It was the foot soldier one. But it was April in the April packaging and all the weapons. The back of the card was April and everything. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, because April's hand was kind of like marked up. So I'm like, is this something that somebody returned? Because the bubble was off a little bit as well. So it looks like they, they used the heat gun, right. got it off with no rips or tears, did whatever they had to do, and then put it back on, and they, they didn't center it. So I called you, and I was like, I wasn't sure if it was that or a factory error. Because factory errors do happen. Totally. It happens the most with Jack, or excuse me, uh, Mattel. Mattel does factory errors with their wrestling figures all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I got uh, Elite. What is it? WWE Elite Series 17 or 18, something like that, where Zack Ryder is in it. Um, and he's supposed to come with the Internet Championship belt. I found one out of all of them. And I was just looking through the rack. And I wasn't really paying attention. And I saw one where he had the tag team title instead. And it said <laughs> included the Internet. I was like, whoa, factory error. Because it was a fresh case. You know, you right. just put the whole case out. So I was like, that's coming home with me. Because as far as the Elites go, I only collect the flashback figures. Or a CM Punk. You know, any CM Punk from the uh, Elite line I have to get. The latest one I bought was, uh, uh, well, from the latest series, we got the blue trunks with the orange. Right on. And I didn't even think about it. John's like, you know, he, that's the Chicago Bears thing. I was like, what? So I went back and got it. I didn't even fucking think about it, you know? So I'm a big CM Punk guy. So just to, uh, uh, like, not really off subject, those elite figures, is the whole idea behind those that they just have extras and there's a little more detail? Detail, very poseable, you know? Yeah. They're just, they are what the name says, they're elite. You know, they're better in every way. So, favorite toy line, you say Transformers. Yeah, from from childhood, childhood. definitely Transformers. Dude. And what would it be now if you had to pick one? Uh, Christ, now? Man, I really like... It's, that's a hard choice. It's I'd either go between... I really like that New Turtles line, mm-hmm. but I'm really hardcore into the Blackest Night DC Direct figures. Okay. I really like them. Now, I got another question for you. What is the one toy that if you get at, like, that coveted toy, whether you own it or you want to own it or you think you'll never own it, what is that one piece that you would have to put at the top of your collection? Like, automatically, this is hands down the piece. You go anywhere within 300 feet of this and an alarm will go off because I will kill you. Piece. What is the one fucking piece you have to own? Wow. Wow. Like, that you think you would just covet above all others. Like, you know what? If there was a fire or a flood or something and you lost your entire collection, that one piece would be the one that would be like, you know what? I'm okay. This is where you would cue in the Jeopardy music. Yeah, for real. I'm serious. So, dude, it, like, I, 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 in, in my brain, dude, I want to say original G1 Optimus Prime. Okay. With the trailer and all the little knick But at the same time, part of me says Millennium Falcon. Mint package Millennium nice. Falcon original. Nice. Love that fucking toy. Love that toy. But then again, honestly, fuck that. 
Fuck that. I know. I know the answer, and it's not either one of those. It's the fucking aircraft carrier from the G.I. Joe line. I always, Ooh, always flag. wanted that as a child. Hell yes. You're and gonna... if ever in my life I have enough money to purchase one of those for myself, new in the fucking box, I will own that. It's funny that you actually bring that up. Uh, C2E2, when I was hanging out with Jordan, you know, we're on a first name basis. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, he had mint in a sealed box. The U.S. flag. It was like the sh- the centerpiece of his display. Holy shit! Yeah, they had a sticker price on it of seven nine seventy nine ninety five. And I don't mean eighty bucks. Eight thousand. Wow. Mint in a wow. sealed box, and the box was in great shape. Wow. You remember back then they weren't like regular. It was just like a white cardboard yeah, right? box that they totally. threw everything in. Oh, um, yeah, dude. I was just like, wow. I was like, can I see it? And they showed it to me, but then they're like, I was making a joke the next day with my buddy. I was on like, Friday. So Saturday, I'm making a joke, and I was like, yeah, you know, you get that. And they're like, we sold it. Wow. Like, the guy agreed to leave it here for the weekend as a showpiece. Right on. But we sold it, and it's filmed. They're going to air it. Nice. On a future episode of Toy Hunter, which, cross your fingers, your boy appears in. So, but they didn't end up selling it for the 8000 I think they let it go for six. Yeah. Yeah, the guy paid cash, and uh, they gave it to him for six. If I, if I remember correctly. I'm telling you, man, had money, no option, that would definitely be the... I'd be calling the toy and I'd be like, dude, this is what I want. Yeah, really. Mint, perfect, I want it. I want two, because I want to open one and build it. <laughs> yeah. And I always... I wanted that as a kid, man, but... He had some very choice turtle pieces there for yeah. some decent prices. Um, I actually pulled up a website that you might be interested in. Uh, they've specialized in box mintage. 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 Damn, dude. Yeah. Construct. That's awesome. Now, I got one better for you. That's awesome. Peep that price. What? Yup. I'll tell you about it later. What? I'll tell you about it later. Get oh. the fuck out of here. What? Dude. Yeah. I'm your boy, man. That's, that shit's got to be knockoffs, I'm your man. boy. That I'll, shit's I'll, got I'll, I'll to be knockoffs. Later. I'll explain later. Damn. So, yeah. So, you Damn. the Millennium Falcon. Hell, yeah. No. <laughs> that, that aircraft carrier. Oh, I'm sorry. The, yeah, the yeah, flag, yeah. Right? The flag. Uh, you know what, dude? I was sitting here thinking, and I was like, man, what was the one toy that I like coveted most? And that's it, dude. The one I never had. Dude, that thing is huge. Never had. Like, I, I, I mean, most of the time, I, stuff like that. Obviously, you put the uh, pieces together later on. You figure they come in a box, whatever. The box is like this by like this. I was like, how did they fit that on a shelf? You know? Right. They had to put it on display in the fucking aisle. Yeah. <laughs> They don't literally. Dude, yeah. When those came out, I think they were. I want to say three or four hundred bucks. I'm probably wrong, but I know that that's like I because my birthday is close to Christmas, mm-hmm. December first, Christmas twenty fifth. That's right. relatively close. I remember that year. It's like I don't want shit for my birthday. I want that for Christmas. Mm-hmm. That's all I want. And dude, I remember my dad's told me stories many times, dude, about how he really wanted to buy me that thing, but. You know, I got similar stories. Just can't do that shit. And he even saw a knockoff version of it for nice. two fifty and still couldn't afford it. Wow! But man, I had a friend that had that shit when I was in sixth grade. I remember I just went in his house and I just like petted it. <laughs> I was like, I don't even want to play with it. I just want to look at it. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it reminds me of that <clears throat> Simpsons episode where Milhouse gets the blood sport game. Mom, Bart's cursing! Yeah. Mom, Bryce touching my toys! Kick you downstairs and shit. Um, I have two pieces that I would covet above everything else. One I actually own. Um, that one that I own currently would be the Ghostbusters uh, Firehouse. Nice. Mint, sealed box. I actually have two. I have one mint in a sealed box. Thanks, Lou. And um, then I have the one from my childhood still. Nice, that's badass, dude. You know, I mean, it broke beat to shit, and over the <laughs> right years, on, but hey. I, I would use it as an extra building for New York when the turtles were on, you know, up there. Um, I used it for the X Mansion for a little while, and then when the Spider Man figures, I used it as the Daily Bugle. You know, so it's had you got a lot creative of, with it. It had a lot of play. It, had, it was a GI Joe headquarters for a while. All I did was turn it on its side. Um, you know, it was it's it's been through the ringer, but it's still there. I can't I can't force. It's just the building and the doors, and I think I have the trap, uh, the containment unit. But I don't have, like, the elevator stick that broke off all that shit. I right can't on. bring myself to get rid of this toy. Hey, man, it's, it's got fucking sentimental value, you know, dude. I can't. And it's like, if I have a son, I'll pass it on. And there's nothing against my daughter. But, I mean, she's a girl, man. Yeah. You know, it's like, daddy loves his little girl, but she's got to have her girl toys. You know, I want totally. her to grow up and, you know... I don't know. I, I always told my, my girl, I was like, look, you know, we named our daughter after a comic book character. That doesn't mean that she has to grow up with, you know, into that world. So you don't she, want, you're not like forcing your daughter to into I'm your Not world. at all. I'm not. But you know what? She knows who the Hulk is. She knows who Spider-Man is and she knows who Batman is. She's got some of the pajamas and stuff, but the girls' pajamas, you know. Right on. Uh, she's got the Hulk fists and, you know, she, she gets mad and like when she wants to wrestle with me. That's our thing. Like with her mom. 
She'll paint. She'll do all this stuff. She just plays on the electronics. Girly stuff, you know, paint nails. With me, she's like, Daddy, let's play Hulk Smash. And she smashes her fist because she wants to wrestle, you know? Right on. That little girl fucking hit, man. <laughs> but if I have a little man's, you know, he's... I don't, I don't want to force it on him either. But it's around. You're going to kind of get drawn to it. That or you're going to get sick of it. One of the two. But I think you'd only get sick of it if it's forced on you. Right on. We'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah, besides the firehouse... My only other one that is like coveted above above everything, which I am in the process of paying for, like I'm making payments on it. The Technodrome. Nice. The Technodrome. Nice. Um, I remember when that came out. <coughs> I did the same thing you did. My birthday's in April. I was like, Ma, I don't want nothing. I was like, I don't want nothing. Don't give me shit. I want the Technodrome for Christmas. She's just like my parents. Like back then, the toys. I mean, GI Joe's were two sixty nine. Right. Ninja Turtles were three sixty nine. Or Adventure, they were three for ten dollars on Sundays. So we always go and shit stocked up. But uh, she was my mom was like, "It's your birthday. You got to get something." So I got shit for Christmas anyway, or for my birthday anyway. Excuse me. Christmas came around. She's like, "You're gonna be really happy." You see, my parents sometimes with the type they didn't believe in babysitters, or they just didn't want to leave us with anybody. So right. sometimes they took us with when they had to do the holiday shopping. So sometimes we got to see what we got. You know, we were, me and my sister were old enough to know. Like, right on. my sister's the type of person don't sugarcoat shit. She's five <laughs> years younger than me, so I'm twelve and she's like what eight, and she's like, "Oh yeah, there's no Santa. I don't care." <laughs> you know, she didn't care. She really didn't. That's awesome. Um, but it didn't bother it didn't bother her because we knew where we were getting. The one Christmas I'll never forget, like me and my dad don't have a close relationship. I can go, like when I stay at my mom's house on the weekends, I walk in the house, I don't even say hi to him sometimes. You know, we look right at each other and just kind of one of those. The one, one of the best memories I have though is, I don't remember what year it was, we were Christmas shopping, we went to Toys R Us over on Western and Belmont, which is still there at Lane Tech, by Lane Tech High School. And uh, we walked in and we grabbed two carts. You know, I grabbed one for my stuff and my mom grabbed one for my sister. And um, my mom goes, you know, my mom's organized. She's like, look, we're going to go to the girls' section. You guys go to the boys' section, whatever. So we're going. And my mom was more... My mom is the type of person where it's like, okay, you spent $300 on you, I'm spending $300 on you. You might only get two gifts, but that's your own fault. Right on. You know, you get 50 gifts just because you know how to shop. Right. Totally. But it was the equal amount thing. But then after a while, she's like, you know what? No, that's not fair. You get five things, you get five things. I don't care how much I spend. Because we made it known to her. It doesn't matter. You can spend 600 on you and 200 on it as long as it's, we get what we what want. What yeah. So they go off and do the thing. At this time, Ninja Turtles is slowly fading out. Beast Wars is on. Spider-Man's around. And uh, we get there. My dad's like, you got this? I was like, nah. Throws it in the cart. You got that? No. Throws it in the cart. You got that? Dad, I don't even know what the fuck that is. Throws it in the cart. <laughs> You know, and he's just like to the point where he's like, Oh, look, the figures are on sale. And he's looking through and he's like, Pick out all the ones you don't have. I'm like, Okay, so I'm grabbing him. He's like, Okay, 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 just chucking them all in the cart, dude. The cart was overflowing. Figures were falling out That's of the awesome. fucking cart. <laughs> and I'm just like, Doing like, Oh my God, if I, you know, I'm going crazy. Then my sister comes running into, you know, Toys R Us kids were running around on their own. Johnny, Johnny, look what I got. I got Baby Wanna Walk. And she's looking, she's, Is that your cart? I'm like, yeah, where's yours, my mom? Because there's like three dolls in there. She's like, what did you... My dad's like, all right, I'm done. Let's go. I'm going to go home. I'm hungry. You know, I'm just like... Nice. You know, so it was that stuff. But shit was a lot of, a lot more affordable back yeah, then. Yeah, no, totally. I remember... Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done. Sorry. I'm going in my t- Technodrome story. Oh, right, right on, right on. So, um, so we saw the Technodrome there, and I almost, like, literally pissed my pants. <laughs> it's just like, you're not a fucking kid. You better not do that. Um, so I, I was like, that's what I want. That's what I want for Christmas. Don't give me nothing else. That's what I want for car- for Christmas. So this Christmas, I actually have on VHS. You know, sometimes the parents break out the camcorder. So this Christmas is on VHS. I'm sitting there opening gifts and shit with my annoying squeaky ass voice. And I opened some figure, a box, like a clothing box. But my mom put the figures in there. Slam Dunkin' Don slash Don the Curve of Turtle. Ninja Turtles board game. Um, some pajamas. And a few other things that nobody gave a shit about, like cat guns and bullshit. Right on. Then my mom's like, all the small stuff's out of the way. For me and my sister, she's like, all right, you each have one big box. And my sister goes, and it's a kitchen. She wanted, like, the play kitchen, so she finally got that. And then the box, to me, at the time, I was standing up. It was about as tall as my waist. At least that's the way I remember it, and that's the way it looked on camera. Um, so I'm like, I screamed at the top of my lungs, the Technodrome, my fucking high-pitched ass little kid voice. I ripped that sucker open, man. I was like, ah! <gasps> It's the sewer! Nice. I had the sewer play set and shit, and I was just, my mom's like, we could not find a Technodrome anywhere. So I never owned it. So I finally found it. I'm not going to say how much I'm paying for it on air. Um, so there's a couple but you're people it. that'll <laughs> smack me, but I'm in the process of actually paying it off. Nice. So, and the cool thing is, the guy is actually going to deliver it. It's, I, I believe, is in Ohio. Uh, I'm paying nice. that off. As well. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to have you drive all the way over here for that. Because that I don't want. I actually ended up buying the sewer play set from him. It's mint. 
to the point where it was wrapped up in saran wrap. Nice. It's like super it's, fucking it's special. It's it still got the original grocery price tag wow, on it, like thirty nine ninety nine or some shit. But um, and also I was like, you know what? Do you have Krang's Android body? Like not the small nice. bigger version. I know what you're talking about. One. Yeah. And he's like, yep. But that one, uh, it's mint in the box. But the factory state, the tape is broken. Like the flap was open to right. make sure everything was in. But certain items, I can I can deal with that yeah. because I don't plan on selling it. I'll I'll tape that bitch up myself. I don't care for certain things. I don't care the values of. And the right Ninja Turtles line is that I don't care about the value of it. I'll <laughs> tape retape it myself. Your your tactic drone story made me think of this one Christmas thing. I was like eight. I wanted the Castle Grayskull. This is nice. Gonna wrap this up here. Well, Castle Grayskull, dude. And uh, I remember. I think, dude. My parents always struggled when we were kids because they were young. Like, my parents were in their 20s when we were little kids. So they were young, and you know, that's hard and shit to have a house, pay all your bills, take your shit. And I remember that <clears throat> that Christmas, and I was like, man, I'm like almost sure I'm going to get this, and I didn't get it. But she got me the Tower of Doom and a shitload of Marvel Universe action figures from back then in the 80s. I almost bought that Tower of Doom Dude, last month for my birthday. I was so fucking stoked, man. Like, that thing... To me was and, cause, and I think she got it because I was always reading Spider Man mm-hmm. and you know Captain America shit and she knows into that stuff and that to me was so much fucking better than Castle Grayskull would have ever been. Yeah, I need to get one. Of those. The Tower of Doom. Oh yeah, dude, I found it mint in a sealed box for about eighty bucks. That's not bad, man. No, it's not. I was like, nice. The Tower of Doom. Um, I believe it's next year, if not later this summer. Transformers thirtieth. Yeah, next year, thirtieth anniversary. Yeah, if I'm correct. Uh. They are releasing, uh, under the Generations line, the biggest Transformer ever to be released at retail, Metroplex. Nice. They said it's as tall as a three-year-old child. They Jesus. They pictures of it. It's about this big. The Transformer City. I'm copping it. They that's, say that's if badass. you actually buy like the little Legends figures, the real yeah. small ones, it's totally in scale with it. That's awesome, man. I got to cop one. Fucking A, dude. You got to cop one, too. Fucking it, that, that would be sweet, dude. Fucking that would be fucking sweet. But uh, well, that's that's it. Down memory time, lane. Man. Yeah, totally. Nah, toys, man. I'm totally going to buy some toys now. Totally, gotta go buy some toys now. All right. Well, uh, you can always catch us comicsremix.com, which is your hub for everything comics remixed. It connects you to our Facebook, to our Twitter, connects you to the Spinner Rack. Uh, what else does it connect? You contact us at the Spinner Rack at ymail.com, uh, comicsremix at gmail.com. Uh, in the subject header, uh, go ahead and type on who you want to contact, either myself, David, Brian, or John. God, what else is there? I think that's about it. That's man. all of it, right? That's it. Uh, like I said, if you don't go, just go to Comics Remix. The link for everything is on there. Everything's you know, there. Everything is on there. So, Any questions, comments, like you said, spinnerrackbymail.com mm-hmm. for the show specifically. Otherwise, everything you want is at the hub, comicsremix.com. That's issue 10 of the Spinner Rack. Folks. Oh, our walk down memory lane and some of our favorite toys. Oh, man. Makes me wish my shit wasn't in storage, man, because it's times like this, like, I just go home. You just want to go look at stuff? Yeah. 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 I know how that is. It's all good. All right, man. Well, this is Big B Brian Adams alongside Junior Ruiz, Toy Hunter and Training. <laughs> <laughs> told, told me to get. We'll see Peace. you guys next issue.